And, and I picked out, underlined and picked out 10 what I call life-altering truths to fight materialism. Please, Number sir. one, this is a simple one. First life-altering truth. You can't take it with you, but you can send it ahead. Wow. If we really believe that, if we really believe that, that we can't take any of this stuff to heaven, we would be strategizing how to send the maximum amount ahead instead of not. Number two, this is a great statement. The grace that has freed us from bondage to sin is desperately needed to free, to free us from the bondage, from our bondage to materialism. Do we really think that? Number three, God prospers me not to raise my standard of living, but to raise my standard of giving. Wow, that kind of sounds like a, when I used to be in the Southern Baptist Church in Georgia, it sounds like a slogan for a campaign of giving for a building or something. But that's actually what the Bible says, that God gives us these things to reflect his ownership of our lives. I always remember John MacArthur when I was on staff there. He said that the elders kept raising his pay to see if he'd be a good steward and give it back to the Lord. Isn't that interesting to think about? Not to raise your standard of living. Number four, God doesn't look at what we give, not only at what we give, he also looks at what we keep. God judges what we give by what we keep. Remember what the giver Jesus honored? The widow who out of her poverty gave, gave so little, but proportionately it was everything? That's what the Lord notices. Number five, Alcorn says, I've heard people say, I want to have a heart for missions. And I always respond, Jesus tells you exactly how to get it. Put your money in missions. Put your money in the church and with the poor, and your heart will follow. Did you know that the purpose of the church is not to be begging and putting advertising and saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, get involved, get involved, get involved. The people who are invested here are involved here. And the people who aren't, you can't drag them in because they don't have an investment because Jesus said where your treasure is, your heart follows the treasure. And so that shows who the master is. Number six, when Jesus warns us not to store up treasures on earth, it's not because wealth might be lost it's because wealth will always be lost. Either it leaves us while we live, or we leave it when we die. No exceptions. Realizing its value is temporary should radically affect our investment strategy. And then I love this. According to Jesus, storing up earthly treasures isn't simply wrong, it's just plain stupid. Now do we really believe that? Does that show? Number seven, it's increasingly common for Christians to ask one another those tough questions. How is your marriage? Have you been spending time in the word? How are you doing in terms of sexual purity? Have you been sharing your faith? But how often do we ask, how much are you giving to the Lord? Or, have you been robbing God? Or, are you winning the battle against materialism? Interesting. Number eight, many Christians dread the thought of leaving this world. Why? Because so many have stored up their treasures here on earth, not in heaven. Each day then brings us closer to death. If your treasure's on earth, each day brings you closer to losing everything. And that isn't good. Number nine, he who lays up treasures on earth spends his life backing away from his treasures. To him, death is loss. He who lays up treasure in heaven looks forward to eternity. He's moving daily toward his treasures. To him, death is gain. Sounds like a verse, right, that Paul wrote. Wow. He who spends his life moving toward his treasures has reason to rejoice. Question, are you despairing? Because you're getting further away and you can't spend it fast enough and you have limited strength to... Or are you rejoicing because you're getting closer to your treasures? And now the last one, and then it's time for communion. When you leave this world, here's a great question. Will you be known by God who really knows you and the friends that really knew you as one who accumulated treasures on earth that you couldn't keep? Or will you be recognized as one who invested treasures in heaven that you couldn't lose? Remember, Peter heard Jesus ask, who are you living for on earth? Are you living for me? Does your time, your treasure, your, your habits, your, your devotion, does it point that way or this way? <laughs>